Good day, everyone. Meteorologist Mark Mulner here. Welcome to my 2023 Hurricane Outlook. This is where I go over the numbers of what I'm expecting this hurricane season. And we'll go over and see just how strong this El Nino this year is exactly going to be. Is it going to have a major impact? And what about those high sea surface temperature anomalies going on out in the Atlantic? We'll just take a look and see just what we're going to be looking at this hurricane season in the entire Atlantic Basin. Let's get into it. And as we take a look at the 2023 hurricane names for this hurricane season, you can take a look, see if your name is on the list. We have everything from Arlene down to Whitney. I think we'll make it somewhere into the middle to maybe a little bit more than halfway through this alphabet. Let's explore the reasons why. And here's my 2023 hurricane outlook by the numbers here. Take a look at this. Yep, 14 named storms looking at about an average season with seven of those becoming hurricanes and four major hurricanes. Why the downtick this year? I've been predicting hurricane seasons well above average for about eight years now. Well, it has to do with El Nino coming in. We have a weak El Nino developing. Um, we did have La Nina last year, and we think that at this point, it's going to increase throughout this hurricane season, especially towards the mid to latter portion of this hurricane season. So we'll start out with a weak El Nino and then transition to a more moderate uh, El Nino by the time we get to the end of the season. Now, the atmosphere is going to have to reset itself, so it, it will feel like we're more neutral to weak La Nina initially before we start transitioning towards more vertical wind shear uh, towards later in the season and we get into more of an El Nino pattern. So it, there, we have high sea surface temperatures too that may counterbalance some of El Nino's effects later in the season. Let's get into all of that. As we take a look at the model data here for the ENSO index, this index gives us a great indicator of what's going to happen this hurricane season. As you know, uh, this is the statistical analysis between all the models here, the green line. Uh, so, you know, that takes us up, you know, towards as we get into the hurricane season, plus uh, 0 0.5 degrees Celsius. And then up towards one, you know, as we get towards the fall. So, you know, that's getting that's heading towards a moderate uh, El Nino. But as I said before in previous forecasts, you actually have a lag factor uh, with respect to the atmosphere. So, yes, we will be heading towards a El Nino type season here. Uh, but essentially, um, you know, it's going to be a slow rise here, which means uh, the atmosphere is going to have to reset itself. So we're going to still feel like we're in a La Nina to neutral uh, the first half of the hurricane season. And then as we head into the second half, El Nino will really start to feel its impacts on the hurricane season. We'll start to see that upper level wind shear start to shear a lot of those systems. But I still think we'll see, you know, quite a bit in the way of development, you know, the first half of hurricane season and into the second half, although there'll be a lot more wind shear as we head later in the forecast uh, for this hurricane season. So taking a look at tropical trouble areas, areas that are likely to have the most tropical development and tropical storm paths for this 2023 hurricane season. You can see out here in the Cape Verdes, we got a light to moderate risk here. It's mainly off the southeast coast and the Gulf of Mexico that we start to see, you know, areas where we could really see tropical systems blossom, develop you know, into tropical storms and hurricanes. There is an area just east of the Leeward Islands, Lesser Antilles here, that could see some tropical development as well. You notice the lack of activity here into the Caribbean. I think that's going to be the result, especially later in the season of El Nino, the upper level wind shear. But yeah, you can see there's some areas here in the Gulf, I think, that will get some potential landfalls and especially the East Coast to the United States, too. I know I've gotten many people up here into the Northeast that are wondering they haven't been hit by a major hurricane in a couple decades. So could it actually happen, you know, in parts of New England where you haven't been hit in what seems like a very long time? Well, I think your time may be running out and we'll have to keep an eye on that as well. But we're also looking out here into the rest of the Atlantic. There's going to be a lot of recurvatures as well. Areas off the U.S. East Coast that are further away from the wind shear, I think will also stand a chance. And of course, Florida, yeah, that's always the big wild card. And I still think you could see a bad season as well. As you can see here, the Enso index is warming very quickly here across the eastern Pacific. Um, you know, there's areas that are actually approaching the plus two, but averaging it all out, we're actually getting towards the towards the plus 2.2 .2 degrees Celsius here. You can see we've been on an uphill climb here uh, throughout the month of March and April. 
And that's just going to continue here. Uh, we could, by the end of the season, maybe be approaching that plus one degree Celsius. So the sea surface temperatures here across the western Atlantic are running way above average here. Look at this, the Gulf of Mexico off the southeast coast, up the east coast for that matter, even portions of the Caribbean uh, looking well above average here. That is quite a tremendous you know, amount of sea surface temperature heat. And I think this will help to negate some of El Nino's effects as we go forward. We'll, ha we'll see, still see a lot of development, but once things get cranking, it may have a hard time uh, due to the upper level wind shear. And as we take a look at the entire Atlantic Basin, you can see right out here in the MDR, look at this. There is a lot of sea surface temperature heat to deal with here. Look at that going all the way up the East Coast as well. Uh, the only cool pocket here is in the Western Caribbean. And as we go throughout this hurricane season, you're going to see wind shear increasing as El Nino really kicks in, especially from August onward. So the upper level wind shear all these uh, winds that are coming in from the Pacific into the Caribbean particularly, and even into the Gulf of Mexico, and then eventually into the main development region of the Atlantic. We're going to start to really see uh, this wind shear, this upper level wind shear, uh, shear a lot of those tropical systems and tropical waves apart, um, and even hurricanes that get going will not be immune to this wind shear. So here's the positioning of the high pressure systems this Atlantic hurricane season. It's actually a little bit reversed from previous one. Um, you know, later in the season, we're going to see this high pressure, you know, go from early part, you know, way out here in the Atlantic, hence why we have a lot of troughiness along the U.S. East Coast initially, um, I think, as we go into the season. However, that will, that subtropical high will progress throughout the season towards Bermuda, which will help push the storms closer to the U.S. East Coast and the Gulf of Mexico here. So things are things will get interesting. However, we have El Nino getting into the mix here. So that will produce a lot more wind shear, especially across uh, parts of the Western Atlantic Basin here when you get into the Caribbean and parts of the Gulf of Mexico. Thank you for joining me for this edition of Hurricane Northeastern here at Media Marks 2023 Hurricane Outlook. Don't forget, smash that like button, question or comment down below, subscribe if you're new to the channel, hit that notification bell button so you're alerted this entire hurricane season. Also, we have some social media pages, Twitter, at Weather Eastern. Also, you can find me at Hurricane Northeastern on Facebook, go over and like the page, I have some lots of updates as well, and Media Mark, Facebook. Also, don't forget MediaMark.com. Thanks for joining me.